First, thank you very much for inviting me for this good time here today. We will start the it's just a few minutes uh, in which we will just mention the new procedures that we are doing for pain management uh, to help the orthopedic patient. Uh, we will just in 20 minutes begin to the present pain management intervention or procedures that we used to do every day for orthopedic patients to help them for pain relief. My name is Muhammad Yusri and I am uh, from Cairo University. Uh, which pains we are dealing with? The facet joint pain, which uh, whether cervical or lumbar, the radicular pain, whether in the arm or the sciatica, and the other, the sacroiliac pain, adhesions after spine surgery, joint pain, especially the large joints like the knee, head, shoulder, and the cases of reflex sympathetic dystrophy. What are our tools? Our tools are either injecting medications or using the radio frequency current from the radio frequency generators to produce two types of the radio frequency, whether the pulsating, which is not destructive, I can use it for the nerve roots, and it will do a pain relief and no destruction for the nerve, or the thermal destructive that I can use to destroy the lateral branches, supplying the sacroiliac joint or the medium branches, which supplying the facet joint. Uh, in the injections, we inject either steroids, which is refused by patients, especially in Egypt, they have a very bad reputation. Many patients refuse to be injected by steroids. Uh, we can use the hyaluronidase, uh, the magnesium, ketamine, theobivacaine, hypertonic saline directly on the nerves or in the uh, sleeve of the nerve in the anterior epidural space. Uh, first, our target when we are going to do epidural, like the years before, is we put a medication, a very big volume of medication in the posterior epidural space, which is not my target. My target is in the anterior epidural space. The inflammatory process is between this nerve root and the disrupted disc. This is the area which is followed, uh, uh, filled with uh, inflammatory mediators and cytokines. So I have to put my injection here uh, with a very few millimeters, uh, enough to uh, act here. Not the, in the posterior epidural space, we have to inject uh, five millimeters or more than this. Okay, the radicular pain is often a result of root inflammation rather than mechanical when there is a, a motor uh, or mechanical uh, uh, suffering from the patient, we have to go directly to surgery. Uh, the effectiveness of epidural injection, which is commonly due, is completely controversial because some of the uh, studies say it's about 20% success, the others say 90% success but uh, it is not recommended nowadays. This is the distribution, okay, of the injection. If I do it in the posterior epidural space, or if I do an uh, epidural injection, what I need is just one of these drops here in the nerve root, or near the nerve root. No, I don't need, maybe I injected the whole volume, but the nerve root uh, take nothing from this. The rationale is to deliver medication close to the nerve root, rather than a high concentration and it's away from the nerve root. This is the picture or the neurogram when we are going transforamina to the anterior epidural space between the nerve root and the disc. We can see this. This is the nerve in and the new, uh, and the neural sleeve. Here, this is a very successful uh, area to be injected, just one mil of my injection. This is a video, this is why we are injecting, and this is the nerve root. And this is after we inject the, the, uh, the injected, it will be used, and I can see the distribution of the dye. When the dye is disappeared, here it's a successful injection for the nerve root. Okay, the radio frequency machine is other than the infection. It produces an electric and a thermal field. I can use the electric field which is not destructive for the nerve that I want to preserve its function and I can use the heat, it's like a computer with two modes, uh, the heat for destroying this. So the radio frequency is used to lyse the nerve tissue and do interruption. So it will lead to a long lasting relief of pain. 
the other type I can no longer burn the nerve, just the stunning of this, and I call it the pulsed radio frequency. The, the difference between the continuous or the thermal radio frequency, I do continuously this uh, electric current, so I will go to the nerve damage. But when I use the pulsed radio frequency, it's just short electric pulses with higher voltage, followed by silent periods, so the, the temperature will never be over 40, so I can take the effect without the side effect, no nerve damage. This is the radio frequency machine that we use, and the patient is in, in the prone position, and we use it by fluoroscopy guided or not by the CR. This is if I am going to inject and this is the probe of the radio frequency machine. Here inside this cover there is a very thin stylet connected with this uh, wire to the radio frequency machine. When I go, uh, I remove the stylet of the needle and I put instead the, the other uh, probe. It's a very thin probe going inside the needle. It's completely insulated except its tip, just half of uh, five uh, uh, one centimeter or half of centimeter is burned, so I can burn here just the area what I need. If I need a, a very long area, I can use a pair uh, uh, one centimeter, or I can use a half, half centimeter. This is, uh, the needle is inside, we remove the stylet and put the stylet of the machine and connect it to the radio frequency machine. Okay, this is the picture. If I want to burn the medial branch for the facet joint, it's present here. Okay, and the machine doing uh, either motor stimulation and sensory stimulation, so I confirm the side, so I can connect my needle to, the, to burn the medial branch for the facet joint here. If I'm going to use this for the nerve root, okay, which is, uh, I, I need its function. This is the picture, there are two inside the forum, this is inside, this is uh, not yet. I connect this with the machine and I use a pulsed radio frequency which is not destructive. For the sacroiliac joint uh, pains, we are dealing with the sacroiliac joint whether it's idiopathic pain or after the spine fixation. There is so many cases of uh, sacroiliitis and, and rheumatoid patients. If we inject the, uh, inject, uh, the uh, joint, we inject from here, but recently what we are going to inject, the steroid is also refused by the patient. Uh, it has a rule of course if the patient agrees, but if he did not agree, we can use others like the hyaluronic acid. We can use now the dextrose 25% as a prolotherapy. The prolotherapy is a proliferative therapy. We can do adhesions to make fixation for the joint not to move, okay? And after mobilization, after six months or something like this, you can inject another uh, dose. Recently, we can inject the pond cement inside the sacroiliac joint to do fixation for this joint. If I use the, the, the uh, radio frequency machine to burn the lateral branches which supply the sacroiliac joint, I have to do so many lesions because uh, the nerve or the lateral nerve may go like here or here or here. It's different from patient to patient. So, so we can do uh, 10 lesions, uh, destructive lesions, uh, to uh, let this is free without pain. This is the needles of the radio frequency machine, okay, for the lateral branch from here and from here lateral to the foramen. Uh, for lumbar sympathectomies, we can. Uh, for a reflex uh, sympathetic dystrophy, this is the picture when we are going from the back to anterior to the vertebra. Here is the uh, sympathetic chain. Uh, sorry for talking uh, fast, but I think there is no uh, enough time. This is this is the lateral, okay, and this is when we are do an AB view, and this is the distribution of the dye. This is very successful because it's confined to this. Area, and this is the distribution for the sympathetic plexus. Okay, if, uh, if when I'm injecting the dye, it's distributed up or down. So if it, it is not distributed down, I have to put another needle here. But here, I, I don't need to put uh, up. This is the distribution of the dye in the AD view. It's going up. It is the same. Uh, for uh, adhesions after the uh, spine surgery, there is a lot of adhesion. This is Rags. He is American and he is 
uh, he, he discovered the rice catheter, which creates a rice catheter, which is a very firm catheter with non-traumatized end. And we can manipulate it from outside, from the sacral hiatus. I can manipulate the tip if just I bend it uh, for uh, some angle. Uh, we use it for uh, scar tissue uh, solve. It's a many, very invasive, uh, 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 discovered by Dr. Gabur in the uh, 1980s. Okay, we can face the scar tissue in 40% of patients after surgical intervention, but we can see it in patients without any surgical intervention if there is infection or organized hematomas, annular tears from the annular tear from the disc and the leakage of the nucleus bulbosus may lead to inflammatory process which will lead to later to uh, uh, adhesion, starting by inflammation without any surgery. <coughs> this is where we are. This is the sacral hiatus and this is the catheter. I can travel it up. And this is on fluoroscopy. First, we have to inject the dye to see the scar is in the area which is not distributed to it. This, this is the famous Christmas tree. When we inject the light, it, it's like a Christmas tree in the normal patient. And this is the catheter. It's going up. I want to make it in the right L5S1 foramen. This is the catheter. Okay, there is a scar tissue here. I can manipulate. I can manipulate and go up. Okay put it in the foramen and go out from the other side. Look at this, it's out now. So it's very parallel to the nerve root and I can inject hypertonic saline, I can inject steroids, I can inject hyaluronidase. It will dissolve just around, at the area I want to dissolve the scar tissue at this area. The radio frequency for, this is very recent, to use the radio frequency for painful, painful knee joint. When I go inside the, the knee and I use the pulsed non-destructive radio frequency, I can relieve the pain here because the electric current will destroy the nerve endings without any destruction, without any nerve, without any nerve burning. But I can, this is, this is the needle connected to the probe. To inside. Here we can burn. This is the, the genicular nerves of the knee. We can do. We can put three needles and we do stimulation and uh, confine that there is no motor affection. I will not burn a motor nerve. Then I can put connect each needle to the radio frequency machine to burn the genicular nerve and take a long lasting, maybe up to two years of pain relief for the knee. Thank you very much. Thank you.